every time uh, someone asks me how like I made it or how I got that movie, that first thing made, um, I tell them, here's how I made it, but don't copy my playbook because Hollywood's like a bank. And every time someone exploits a, an insecurity, they're gonna close it up immediately. <laughs> You can never do it the same way twice. Today's show is sponsored by Enigma Elements. As filmmakers, we're always looking for ways to level up production value of our projects and speed up our workflow. This is why I created Enigma Elements, your one-stop shop for film grains, color grading LUTs, vintage analog textures like VHS and CRT images, smoke, fog textures, DaVinci Resolve presets, and much more. After working as an editor, colorist, post, and VFX supervisor for almost 30 years, I know what film creatives need to level up their projects. Check out enigmaelements.com and use the coupon code IFH10 to get 10% off your order. I'll be adding new elements all the time. Again, that's enigma, E-N-I-G-M-A, elements.com. I'd like to welcome to the show Dean Flesher Camp. How you doing, Dean? Hi, hi, good. How you doing? Good, man. I I was so excited to have you on the show, man, because I just had the pleasure of watching your new film, Marcel, the show with with shoes on, uh, last week. And I told I told your PR people, I'm like, I, I I just I need to have them on. I need to know how this happened. <laughs> I need to know in God, what in what universe do I live in that this movie gets made and put out on a theatrical release, and and it gets made in in general. Be put up by a thatch, put be put up by a twenty four. Like I, I, I need to know the story behind this this film because, <laughs> and I was lucky because I, I didn't know anything about Marcel prior to watching the movie, so I was I was a virgin, a Marcel virgin. But as I did research for this conversation, Marcel's been around for over a decade. So we're gonna get around. It. Yeah, yeah, he is. He, so, uh, and he's an, he's an old soul. Um, he's, he, uh, it, it, well, that, you're not wrong that it is pretty unusual for a movie like this to, to not just get made, but get distributed. Um, you know, I took a ton of real like blood, sweat and indie film hustle. Uh, and <laughs> um, and it uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it would not have gotten made. It would have we, we had sort of the studio offers when those original shorts were made and they certainly were not. Um, you know, their head head wasn't really or the heart wasn't really in the right place. And and I knew that this was going to be, you know, kind of a longer road of finding <laughs> financing independently and then finding this family of incredible, brilliant collaborators um, that made the film possible. So so before we get into the the uh, the archaeology of how Marcel got brought into this world, um, yeah. first and foremost, man, how and why in God's Green Earth did you want to get into this business? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I have always been, uh, I've always been drawn to movies. I was always a, a big movie buff and fan. I went to film school. I, um, it's funny that the first thing that sort of took off for me was this internet short, because I think now people are saying like, well, why'd you decide to turn it into a movie? And it's like, movies were always the plan. <laughs> the, uh, the YouTube fame was sort of a weird, you know, happenstance. Um, um, but I'm glad it happened. And I don't think that this type of film, I, I, my favorite reactions are the people that kind of are coming to it fresh because it's been so long since we've done something with the character and it's changed a lot. It's grown a lot. The whole backstory is sort of different and new. And, um, and, uh, but, but, I, but I do think that it, it would not have gotten made, uh, certainly not in, in the way it got made with all the creative freedom that I was given, that our, that our team was afforded. Um, if it had not had a previously successful run as, you know, YouTube oh. shorts and children's books. Um, I think that there's sort of, you know, it's weird that we are, we are sort of an adaptation of a pre-existing IP because that's like everything that's in movies right now, Top Gun, Lightyear, everything is pre-existing IP. And uh, it's funny that we're technically part of that, but, you know, our uh, process and what this movie is is so completely different from <laughs> a little different than Marvel. A little different. Yeah, a little di- yeah, yeah, yeah. Though I would, I would like to see Marcel in a Marvel movie. I think that would sure. Be absolutely. The, uh, in Marcel the new Thor cinematic cinematic universe. Universe exactly the cinematic the universe. So how you know? So for everybody who doesn't know, how did this character come to life? It just seems so. Just like a shell with shoes on and a googly eye like it's insane and this was came this was like 2010 2009 somewhere around there's when you first came up with so how did the character just come to life 
it it originally came about because uh, the voice came first. Jenny had been doing this little tiny voice because we were sharing a hotel room for a friend's wedding with like a ton of other people to save money. And she started doing this tiny voice to joke about how sort of crushed and uh, and uh, smushed she felt. And um, and then when we got back to New York where we were living at the time, I had completely forgotten that I agreed to make a video for my friend's stand-up show, like local stand-up show. And uh, so, you know, my head popped off the pillow that morning. I was like, oh my God, that's due tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, and so I just very quickly, you know, like asked Jenny, like, hey, let's write a couple of jokes for that character. You have a really funny voice you've been doing. And then I, we, we recorded it. Jenny did some improv around it, cut it together, ran out like a uh, madman collecting, um, you know, supplies from craft stores, basically not knowing really what it would be. I was just like, let's just get a bunch of supplies and I'll, I'll, I'll figure something out. Um, and, uh, and I made a couple of little terrible looking like goblins that, uh, that did not <laughs> pass muster and then landed, finally landed on Marcel, who I think is so like, you know, he's handsome and he's, uh, he's cute. And um, yeah, it was sort of serendipity. And then I screened it. I think I made it and screened it within 48 hours. Uh, and then it, obviously took off on the internet it's a, and it was it was all stop motion animation at at, the, at first right it was a stop yeah motion I mean, it's, it still is all the all the characters in the film are stop motion other than the the rare exception of the uh insects or cg but everything else is stop motion so yeah i, I was going to get into the, i want to get into the technical because i was also yeah yeah i've been i'm a post guy so i've been in post forever and i was just like okay. looking at it and i'm like man is it, it man did they did they emulate it did they emulate stop motion? Did they comp it? Did they do the stop motion and then comp? Like, so we'll get into all that in a minute. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Right, so you put out this little, you made this little throwaway short. And yeah. Like, oh, this is cute. Let's throw it up on this new thing called YouTube. <laughs> yeah. It was, I know it's hard to even imagine a time when you make a short film and it doesn't immediately get posted on YouTube or Vimeo or whatever. But 2010 was like, yeah, the only reason I put it on YouTube at all, because I was in the habit, I'd made lots of videos for, you know, friends shows or whatever. And this was one of the few that I put on the internet because a, uh, a sort of friend at that first screening, like tapping on the shoulder when I was leaving, is like, can you put that online? I really want to share it with my grandmother who was, at the time she had like a broken hip or wrist or something. She was kind of laid up in bed and homebound uh, and she thought it might cheer her up. And that was the only reason I put it on YouTube. So it was designed for this audience of one, but uh, found a much larger one. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing that like that is that was li literally the definition of vi a viral film, a viral. Yeah, it was completely viral. It made what thirty two million views on the first on the first one you did. It's like more than that because I took it down and I put it back up and you know whatever. It's like I think it was probably it probably would be like fifty or something, which is actually. Uh, it's it's, yeah, totally. Oh yeah, totally. Back then, I yeah, I'm not even sure. I don't know what viral videos were before that, like Nyan Cat or something. <laughs> right, exactly. So that was like an actual viral video. It wasn't like something that the algorithm picked up. Like there's no algorithm for Marcel. No. <laughs> it, it, was, it was just sharing and sharing and sharing. And people are like, I got to share this. Oh my God, I got to share this. So it was truly yeah. a viral situation. So when you, the first reactions that you got from the, you know, from that, which is still, again, 2010 is still fairly, I mean, the internet's been around for a bit. YouTube's been around for about five years. I remember mm -hmm. 2010 very well. Um, and what happened to you and Jenny when that, when you start seeing these numbers, you're like, what, what, what the hell's going on? Oh, it felt pretty crazy. I weirdly was like, I don't know. I guess I was pretty enmeshed in internet culture around 2010, but I, because I'd had that experience of like screening it at this, like, you know, kind of like art, art hipster Brooklyn crowd in 2010, seeing <laughs> like the, the most like judgmental, uh, art farts, uh, which I, I consider myself one. I'm not saying that as sure. a, um, um, but see, seeing people who would normally be very judgmental about anything that you screen at like a live comedy show sort of just like completely melt and be like, what was that? And to see how quickly they connected with this character, uh, I was kind of like, I think this might go viral. Really? So you were, you had a, a, an idea that it might go, but yeah, I, mean, I even, thought it would. And, but the definition of viral is not 50 million views. I, I don't think you said, Oh, this is going to go 40, 50 million easy. No. no, no. I thought it would get passed around like, you know, like a small, you know, slightly popular Vimeo video. And then we, maybe we could like leverage that to make a bigger project with it. 
Um, so you already, did not. that was the mindset already. I mean, you were the, you were the hustle and filmmaker. You're like, okay, if this thing goes, we're going to leverage this thing. <laughs> yeah. We're going to go out and get some financing. We're going to make a feature of this damn thing. Oh yeah, so, totally. At the time I was editing, like the, I was taking the worst jobs. Like I was an editor. Oh and, uh, and so I was just like, yeah, how do I segue into directing? Oh dude, don't you speak into the cry, brother. I was in post for 25 <laughs> years, color grading, okay. editing, doing okay, the worst yeah. commercial. Dude, I used to edit promos for Matlock for a television <laughs> station back in West Palm Beach. All right. I so might, I was like, <laughs> I might have you beat. I one of my first jobs editing uh, was editing um, a tutorial for how to do like a like I think I think they advertised on like late night television. It was a tutorial for how to do home water births. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay, so I'm gonna go back like, into my. I'm going back into my archives. I'm see if I can one up that. But man, I don't. <laughs> I don't really Matlock's, think Matlock's pretty great. I mean, it Matlock's. Is. I mean, Matlock's pretty good. Yeah, but I mean, but but a water birth tutorial for late. I mean, that's a. I'm gonna give it to you on that one, man. I think you won. I think you won. And it was it's like a, it was like footage from like amateur, like people who were not you know professional filmmakers, like filming their own home water births as part of this. So thing. so so the home water birth wasn't lit properly, is what you're no, saying. No, no. There wasn't composition. There wasn't composition. There wasn't a a, a techno crane rolling in. Not, not a lot of mise en scene, frankly, for my taste. <laughs> okay, so so the so the first video goes and it. It, you know, goes viral enough. I'm of course, even then people were, especially, I remember especially because I had a, I had a video or I had a short film that was making the rounds through Hollywood at that time. And I was doing uh -huh. the water bottle tour and all that stuff. So I imagine that you got calls from Hollywood and you're like, Oh, Oh, we got to make this into a movie. I want you to tell everybody. Cause I know what happened, even without even knowing what knows what happened. I know they were probably saying, you know, insane stuff like, Oh, oh, we should yeah. team this up with. We should team Marcel up with The Rock. Or, oh yeah! We, oh yeah! No, you're dead. So on. what? So what were the pitches that you got for your character from Hollywood? <laughs> the one that that has stuck in my mind was that some a studio had recommended that we partner him with. Um, I forget it. I'm pretty sure it was Ryan Reynolds. Um, that we partner him with Ryan not Reynolds. A bad they fight, not, not they a bad fight idea. crime together, and I was like, I, I'd watch it. <laughs> I mean, I'd watch it too. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, it's not a, it's not the worst it's idea. I mean, it's, no. the, it's not a hard no. It's a soft no on that, but I'd watch it. Like there's yeah. some things you just like, you should team up with the rock. I'm like, I don't know if Marcel yeah. and the rock are really <laughs> right. Matchy or Bruce That's Willis and him. Yeah, the chemistry. <laughs> Bruce Willis be cool. I, <laughs> I was like, then when detective Pikachu came out, I was like, Oh, we got pitched detective Pikachu. <laughs> Basically, what it was, but your IP was not nearly as big as Pikachu. So that's right. No, they were that's smart it. to go with Pikachu. So, um, but so yeah, that, so, so we did that water bottle tour, and it was just very clear, like, oh, this is. They were trying to graft him onto a tentpole franchise, and we were. I was always looking to make you know more of a a, a portrait piece about Marcel to like really because um, I felt like there's no reason to blow up like blow it out. Marcel is already tiny in a blown out world. Taking right. him on a, you know, fighting terrorists in Paris or whatever is like, why? Why? <laughs> again, I, I'd watch that. I, again, sure. I would oh, watch yeah, Marcel totally. fighting terrorists. In Paris. You're gonna see it. You're gonna be on an airplane looking through the new releases, and you're gonna see that soon. Is that <laughs> is that Marcel with Chris Tucker? Is that is that what's going on right now? <laughs> <laughs> that would be incredible. Everyone, everyone listening, listen. A lot of studio execs listen to this show, so uh, if, <laughs> hey. We're just throwing this. We're spitting out gold. Me and Dean are spitting yeah. out gold right now. That's right. <laughs> All right. So you had to, so at least at that point, because a lot of filmmakers, when they go on these water bottle tours, if they're lucky enough to get this kind of attention, they fold. They'll go, okay, yeah, I just want to get in the game. I just want to go. But you and Jenny both said, no, we're, we're going to, we're going to main, we're going to protect Marcel from the savages of Hollywood. <laughs> Yeah, it did feel like something that was like, oh, got it. Like, because he's cute, it's sort of like they're picturing this could be the next Minions or something. And, you know, that was like so out of my um, just like taste. And I think it was it, it also, you know, like indie film might have been a little more the world might have been a little more robust when 12 years ago. And so I think, you know, nowadays, yeah, you see a ton of directors making that jump. And I don't blame them because they want to make a living and they don't want to spend another seven years, you know, financing and doing it independently. Um, 
so so I totally get it. Uh, at the time, yeah, I was just like, no, this character has become very dear to us. We know him incredibly well, and we know that that those little shorts have revealed like two percent of what this movie could be. And um, and yeah, throwing him into the mix with uh, with Chris Tucker in, in, in it. <laughs> Um, but, 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 but now are. that you've told his story, he's back on the table. I'm just throwing that that's out. Right. Should be, yeah, yeah, that's right. You've, yeah. you've made your art piece. <laughs> now let's sell out. Let's sell out. <laughs> yeah. Come at me, Disney. Um, yeah, exactly. Exactly. We're, we're, we're willing to sell the IP to Disney any day. Let us know. Um, that's been the other difficult thing is we, we have, uh, held on to the IP. Um, yeah. Well, because you made, so you, so you've made a multiple shorts of, of, of Marcel over the years, as I saw, I was yeah. like, Every few years, you would make a new short. You had a children's book, children's books written about yep. him. So this was an IP. You've cr- you literally did kind of create an IP, which is really an indie IP, which is really yeah, interesting. I mean, yeah, yeah, totally. I think it's a, a really unusual um, opportunity that that, that has um, that we found ourselves situation we found ourselves in. The uh, the the books we did ourselves, we wrote and I photographed them, and then we worked with an illustrator like to turn them into paintings. Um, and so it has never been the kind of thing, like I get a little miffed when I see people say, you know, oh, Marcel, of course he's a movie now. They like sold the rights to someone. It's like, no, man, it's me. It's me and Jenny. And it has been the entire time. And we have met, we've held onto the rights to this character. We've never merchandised him. Um, and we're, you know, we're beginning to try to figure out how to do that in a way that is holistic to the character and involves, you know, me overseeing all those things. But uh, we've never really done the, the smart thing uh, so that we can all buy houses in Malibu or whatever. <laughs> I mean, I mean, a hundred million. If someone shows up with a hundred million tomorrow, I mean, it's a conversation. It's a conversation. Yeah, it's not right. a hard no. It's a, not a hard no. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that this, I hope that this interview helps you along this, these routes that someone's like, I listen, I saw, I saw the indie film also interview, man. I'll give you 75 mil cash for the IP. I think we can make this work. <laughs> yeah. What's your commission, man? What's hey, no, no. Commission, Alex? <laughs> Just the love, brother. Just the love <laughs> for Marcel. That's all I want. Um, so, okay. So the next question is, all right. So now Hollywood has, has pitched you Pikachu uh, yeah. and, and, and gone down that road. So you guys said, okay, we got to, we got to kind of make this ourselves. So now starts the journey of mm-hmm. finding people who are insane enough to give you money <laughs> To make a movie about a talking shell, yeah, um, in in a house. I mean, it's yeah. Like, I'm sitting, and I have to stop you for a second. I was literally sitting watching the movie, and I'm going, "How did this get? Like, how? Who?" And this is before I knew about the IP and I knew about the shorts. Yeah, yeah. So that makes a little bit more sense, but not much more. Not much yeah. more. <laughs> so, yeah. so. So there's a period after those that the water bottle tour where, you know, we we're making a kid's book maybe. And, and um, we kind of just said no to that. We walked away from those and we didn't do anything with, we were just like, let's just keep our character and, you know, not get into something that we can't, we can't handle and that we're going to be not proud of. Um, and so for, I think like three or four years, uh, we didn't, we just didn't try to pitch it as anything bigger, but the character never went away. And Jenny and I were kind of always sort of riffing about what his world would be and jokes and, um, and I started sort of taking, you know, lazy notes about whenever we'd have a really good idea that we loved about that. And then, you know, after like four years, I felt like, oh, this actually could work as like a feature film. Um, we, we've sort of built out the world and done all of this, um, I don't know, like imag- imagination um, building. And, uh, and maybe this actually could deserve a 90 minute, like a full feature. And the first thing we did was we, we got in touch with uh, Liz Holm who had produced uh, Obvious Child, Jenny's um, first kind of starring role, uh, mm-hmm. also a you know small indie, and um, and and asked her like, how do we? Yeah, let's like do this together. Will you come on to produce it and to start f- really from the ground up and and um, help us find financers and find money for it? And so, you know, we put together uh, a, pers- a kind of prospectus, a, a brief, and had, I had done a lot of like drawing and sort of building out the world. Uh, and, you know, we did like another water bottle, bottle tour where, you know, we're a little older, a little wiser, understood I as a filmmaker understood who I was. And um, and it was even more impossible than just let us make an animated movie about Talking Shell. Uh, it was also uh, I want Final Cut and we want a lot of 
I got final cut. Uh, we want a lot of creative control and we're also not going to um, sell you a screenplay. You are buying a um, really like a detailed outline and a vision and a group of filmmakers that will deliver. But I knew that the screenplay had to be done in tandem with recording audio. Uh, Jenny is such an incredible improviser. She's not a like sit down and write kind of person. Um, uh, and we had, I forget when, but we brought on um, Nick Paley, who's our co-writer on it. And so we were like, we're not, we don't have a finished screenplay to sell to you. You're buying this idea, this abstract, loose, imaginative story and a process that I, to my knowledge is, a, is not a way that any other movie has been made before with this sort of like full, a full stop motion character integrated into a live action world for a feature length. Um, and, uh, and, and a lot of places there were, you know, one or the other of those ideas was a deal breaker. And um, finally we, we found who turned out to just be like our champions. And I'm so grateful that we had them. This, uh, this company called Cinereach who financed the film almost entirely. They're uh, a nonprofit out of New York or a not-for-profit out of New York. They had financed before, you've, you've heard of a lot of their, they've been a presence in IndieWorld for a while. They financed Beasts of the Southern Wild was there was like I think their first really big one um and and they usually they usually do s small grants and finishing funds and things um but uh but they also have this incredible team of, of in-house producers who um who were amazing and, and came on board and so they, they were the place that we found a home for it and a, a home for you know ourselves where we were supported creatively and financially and um they they were you know uh, crucial to get to a movie like this getting made. Not only did you have the balls to, <laughs> <laughs> to put this whole package together, I need final cut. You got no script. Yeah. You uh, were, you're just basically, it's a wing and a prayer here, guys. And it's not like you've done 45 other feature films based on <laughs> that kind of scenario. Yes. Yeah, so true. It is really unheard of. It's really, it's, it, you are an anomaly that this, how this got made but i think it's the power yeah. of the character that pushed it through absolutely i don't think that we you'd be able to do that if it was just you know from scratch and of course not you, you have to have for someone to believe and have that much faith in something um that abstract and that unique it really requires it having had some record of success and we were lucky that that was you know early internet where it was pretty democratic and pretty uh word of mouth successful um, so because it had a little bit of a built-in audience, I think that that allowed us to do that. By the way, I don't think I had balls. I think I had, I think, uh, confidence is just <laughs> sort of ignorance, uh, dressed up. It was ignorance is bliss. Ignorance was suit. bliss. <laughs> doesn't everyone get final cut? I'm just going to ask for final cut. Everyone doesn't have to put in a script, right? You don't have to buy that, right? You just, yeah. just kind of <laughs> roll with it. So I was, I was watching the CBS Sunday morning bit, uh, piece that they oh, did yeah. on you, which was fantastic. Is it true that there was four versions of this movie made? Yeah, I mean, so we made the movie sort of four times. We did the first round was uh, the first couple of years was writing the screenplay. And over the course of that, we were we would record audio for a couple of days to integrate the like Jenny's great improv and like fold in um, Isabella and some of the other characters. So we would record a couple of days and then write and then record and write. So that first two and a half, three years was just writing the screenplay and Towards the end of that, we were um, we were folding in storyboards. So by the very end of that process, we had made the movie in the sense that all the audio was locked, the script was locked, the story was locked, and it was fully storyboarded. Uh, Kirsten Lepore and I storyboarded the entire movie. So that sort of animatic we could watch, and it and it was you know we could show to friends and get feedback. And um, so that was the first time. Then you go into live action uh, and you uh, shoot all the plates. There's sort of all the live action elements, and then the and then that third step is the is the animation. I guess we made it at least three times, if not more. I'm not sure we made it four times, but something like that. It's a lot of that, and then you were also you were also in it as well. 
Yes. Yeah. 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 You're, that's also you're, it. you're playing a, an older version of yourself. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah. I think I'm playing a, I think I'm playing a, uh, maybe a young, I think I'm playing who I was like maybe in college or like shortly after, like pretty, pretty down in the dumps and depressed, kind of a depressive, uh, I don't, I'm glad I'm not that person anymore, but <laughs> I was sort of, I'm, even... I'm also glad I'm not the guy I was in college. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Could you imagine? Could you, could you imagine? Cause, cause it's always fun to see the, the, the 40 year old in the, in the club. It's always. Yeah. 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 It's... Yeah. Right. <laughs> in the corner, the, the guy with the gray, the gray and the goatee in the corner. That's exactly what right. you need. The guy the where club. you're like, he, does he own this place? Who is, does he own this place? Is he a bouncer? He a real... Like, what is he, what is he doing over there? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh, he's dancing. Oh, is that what these calls dancing? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> now, another thing, as I'm watching the movie, I'm, I'm hearing this voice and I'm going, is that Isabella Rossellini? Like, <laughs> no, there's no way they got Isabella Rossellini in this. And I was like, she just, the, the, the character just kept talking. And I'm like, that's Isabella Rossellini. <laughs> like, how? We so, like, the intrigue, my per my personal intrigue on how this movie was made. How in God's green earth did you pitch this to Isabella Rossellini? And she she said, "Sure, I'm gonna play a grandma shell." <laughs> <laughs> I think we got super lucky. We, I mean, we went through, you know, a cast. We worked with a casting director, uh, sure. but we really wanted Isabella, and um, <laughs> we sent her the offer, and we sent her, uh, you know, a brief thing about Marcel and his history on the internet, and. Uh, I think that she probably by herself would have been like, no, I'm Isabella Rossellini. Luckily, her, I think daughter or her kids were, or maybe grandkids were, um, or no, I think her daughter was like, no, 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 we we like Marcel. Like, Marcel's cool. You should totally do this. And so um, she she agreed to do it. And I think, like, it, obviously, I felt like she would be incredible at it, but I didn't know <clears throat> kind of how perfect she would be for it because she is, like, a lot of the things that, that character changed once we cast her because we were able to write it around Isabella and around what, you know, Nick and I found really charming and, and great about her personality. And she has so much in common with the character, even before we met Isabella, like she literally lives on a farm and knows a ton about, uh, about farming and gardening. She has a master's in animal behavior. <clears throat> and, um, and she also is like, she's, she doesn't kind of, suffer fools she doesn't uh she's no. she's just like a very um charmingly blunt and not mean but charmingly blunt person who cuts right to the quick of things and and that became obviously like a central thing about nana connie but some some of that um some of the b-roll you can kind of hear just like the texture of her like for example when she's showing me her strawberry in the movie that's literally her just showing me around her farm and me like interviewing her asking her questions about her farm really that's how and yeah. it, oh, i'm gonna incorporate that in the movie i'm gonna put that in the movie yeah that is a, it's such a fascinating process dude like this is yeah i mean like i said when i got when i walked out of that theater i'm like i have to have the i have to find out how this was made because look I'm, i mean i've been i've been hustling in the, in the indie film game for yeah you know getting close to 30 years now you know, with my own projects and then with the show now that i've heard thousands of stories just and i've studied every anomaly known to man from mariachi to paranormal i mean i've studied all of them had a chance uh -huh. to talk to some of these filmmakers and i saw this i'm like i don't I, I i can't wrap my head about how this was made and that doesn't happen often normally i'm like oh this is what happened and this would happen and even yeah. with the knowledge of the shorts and the ip it's still such an uphill battle to try yeah. to get something like this and maintain this soul that you guys were able to maintain with this the movie you didn't skew off you knew exactly who marcel was and it you know, I mean, and by the way, every time he threw up, I just, I couldn't stop laughing. I just couldn't stop laughing. Sorry. I just, I just, I just, it just came into my head. I'm like, oh yeah. 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 The car. And the car trip. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite parts as well. Um, it, 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 I think that it's like, you know, people have been asking me obviously, well, what's the, what is the genesis? It took, took, you know, you made the character 12 years ago. It took seven years to make the movie. And the answer to the question of like, how does this movie get made? in that exact very unique way is time. You, you in walking away from those studio deals, you also walk away from uh, a quick turnaround because the, the indie road is gonna be hard and you're, you know, one of your only things that's in your corner is that you have more time than like a studio would require to spit out right. something or put it on their slate. Um, it's a huge advantage, uh, but you are taking a risk that, you know, it just never sees the light of day or 
um, the, if, especially if it's an internet thing, like the, you miss your, your moment of popularity or something. Um, but it just felt so, uh, it just felt like the right thing to do. And I knew that I would feel like um, a real shithead making a terrible Marcel movie with a character whose potential I, I knew. Yeah, and uh, it, it, it's it's remarkable. I have to ask you the question though, man. This is something that a lot of filmmakers don't don't understand, and 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 ha- are dealing with as they as they're listening to this right now. How did you get through this th- those years, man? How did you get through those years of not getting the success that you wanted, not getting the opportunities you wanted, having to knock on doors and doors being closed on your face, the nose and the nose and the nose, mm-hmm. or the yeses but yeses with with oh but strings, to get yeah. this yes you knit you get the strings and strings how did you get through all of the those years because this was a over a decade of your life with this mm-hmm. character and getting getting this thing made how do you keep going all those years i think that's something that is important um at some point i realized y- you have to like i wasn't a super uh i don't know some of my like film school friends like graduated from film school and they were so you know, willing to just kick open the door and like give someone the elevator pitch for their screenplay. And and that works out sometimes. And um, as someone who's that just doesn't come naturally to, I um, I realized that I was at some point, I made sort of a promise, I think with Nick Paley, who co-wrote the film, that we're always going to hold each other accountable to at least get to know an actual firm no before we give up on a project. And that is incredibly important because... Um, I'm, at least before this, I was super willing to, you know, if someone just gave me the runaround or they said, we don't know, eh, I don't know, let's, let's um, come back to me in March or whatever, you know, like I would just, I would let those uh, failures or quasi failures really get to me. And, and um, met, I interpreted it as a message that this project, you know, that that was a no. But the truth is, you don't know unless you get to a firm no. So now I think, and I tell this to like anyone who wants to, be an indie filmmaker, get to know, at least get to know, because probably they'll say yes before they say no. If you, you know, so, go, so now go to enough people. So now I want to ask you uh, the technical stuff. All right. So you guys shot this. Wait, can I say one other thing? Actually, real quick, going back to what you said about like uh, studying El Mariachi and, you know, yeah. and those other sort of movies that, um, that did that for someone. I, yeah, or not always. Uh, I I don't remember who told me this, but I read or someone said to me, every time uh, someone asks me how like I made it or how I got that movie, that first thing made, um, I tell them, here's how I made it, but don't copy my playbook because Hollywood's like a bank. And every time someone exploits a, an insecurity, they're gonna close it up immediately. <laughs> you can never do it the same way twice. And that's the thing I've learned over the years is that when you, because I was always trying to hack my way in. I was trying to like, well, if I go down this road, I'll I'll do what Kevin Smith did or I'll I'll, I'll do what Joe Carnahan did or I'll do, you know, and I'll just kind of go all these ways. And I realized years later after going back and looking, you're like, oh, there was never another El Mariachi Uh or or that style. There was never another Clerks. There was never yeah. another Brothers McMullen. There was never another yep. Paranormal Activity or Blair Witch. Yeah, like the, they're 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 like they snuck into the party and then the bouncer came and, cl- and shut the door and made sure nobody else shut got the into court. it. Yeah, totally, exactly. So they, <laughs> that's exactly. So the exact same thing with Marcel. No one's ever going to walk this path. This is your path and your path alone. People can get inspiration yeah. from it. Um, and you know, but they're like, okay, I'm going to go make a. Sh- I'm, 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 I promise you, right now, someone's listening and is going. I'm going to go make an animated short with stop motion and I'm going to create a character mm-hmm. and I'm going to, and, and they're going to try to do this road and, and they're going to go, Oh, it didn't work. Why did it work for them? Because it was your, it was yours. This was, yeah. this was gifted to you from the gods. And you're like, yeah. this is yours. Take care of it. And, and guide it, <laughs> guide it through. <laughs> I, I don't want to discourage anyone from going and making some. Absolutely. Piece, but not the exact no same budget, thing, but. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's true. And, and you know, to some extent, I think to continue a healthy artistic practice, you can't get caught up in um, why didn't this work? Or how do I, you know, how do I get to that person's level? Like, you got to just the only thing in control is, uh, is your work. But the thing is this, and this is something that I found so true after years of talking to all of these great filmmakers, mm-hmm. is every great filmmaker, every great artist, every great writer, Every single one of them is true to themselves. It is their essence, 
coming through their work. They're not copying anybody else. They're not, they're not doing, they're not, you know, I'm not trying to be David Fincher. I'm not trying to be Chris. Yeah. Nolan. They are who they are. And that is the, that is the key to success as an artist. Yeah. And, but that's the scariest thing to totally. come out with a shell with a googly eye and some shoes on and say, this is me and put it out on the internet. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. I mean, seriously, that's you guys. That was something that was so purely you. It's not like yeah. you said, you know what? There was this other shell <laughs> <laughs> with two googly eyes. I'm going to do one. Googly eye. Right, <laughs> like, right, no, right. It was yeah. something that was so personal to you. And that's what made the success of that, of that character. Yeah. It's also a numbers game. Like, I, oh, you know, yeah. I mean, and luck. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and luck. I mean, you, you you reduce the amount of luck required to by making many more things. So, I mean, sure, my spell was the first thing that really took off. But before that, I was hustling it as an editor, editing Waterbirth videos, and uh, and <laughs> creating and creating shorts with my friends. That you know, they never went anywhere. They no one's ever seen those. Um, but it wasn't. Uh, yeah, you you, you got to no, it's not a number. I don't want to say it's a numbers game, but I think you just have to remain in practice. Uh, you just got to keep going. Stuff. You just got the gr yeah. it's a grind. It's the grind and the persistence of showing up. And I know you yeah. know this. Look, there's so many people that make it in this business who really aren't the most talented, but they're the most persistent. Sure. Yes, totally. That's those people that are kicking down doors and giving executives elevator pitches when they're like 19. <laughs> right. Exactly. But you also know people who are extremely talented, but haven't gotten the shot. So, yeah. You know, and it's and you and you wonder, you're like, why haven't they gotten the shot? But this other guy or this other gal got the shot and they're just not mm -hmm. as talented. Like nothing against them. It's just they just don't have this, the goods the same. Yeah, it's really yeah, fascinating. Absolutely. It's a fascinating thing. But if you can be true to yourself and be an expression of who you really are, something personal to you, that's the mm -hmm. key. That's you need your secret sauce. That secret sauce is what sets yeah. you apart from the crowd. And, and and you also won't if you're making something that's personal and true and true to your heart. Uh, you, the money is if you are happen to be successful. It mean you know it doesn't matter so much. <laughs> like <laughs> right. if you're making something true to your heart, you're expressing yourself. That's a that's a and in that's and the value. That is sustaining. That's, yeah, absolutely. So all right, so you guys shot it. Uh, you guys shot the the shells in. Uh, did you actually shot it stop motion? Yeah, yeah. And then so, comped, all, all the, uh, comped it, or was it all on camera? Uh, no. So we, um, I felt from the beginning, like, well, I want this to feel like a real documentary. I honestly had never seen, and maybe still haven't like a quote unquote mockumentary that doesn't just use it as kind of a joke and make fun of its characters. Uh, and so I was like, I want to do a mockumentary about this character and it'll be funny, but I want to treat him with dignity and tell his story with the same kind of respect that you would tell any documentary subject story. So part of the difficulty of that is like, okay, well then, you know, if it's going to be a verite documentary and have that kind of intimacy, how are you going to do handheld motion with a stop motion character? And it's very, very hard, it turns out. Um, but what we did was that we shot everything uh, live action without the characters in it. And then uh, Marcel and, every, and all the animated characters are shot on the animation stage and composited into live action footage. But because like I've been describing it, like everyone knows how a Marvel movie gets made. It's like they shoot the live action. And then step two is that the, v the VFX artists model and composite things in the computer into the footage. Instead of a VFX team, uh, not, I mean, we also had a VFX team, but instead of a computer, we have a, our step two is a second shoot, an animated animation shoot. And because of that, the lighting on Marcel and all the movement and all and all the shadows has to match perfectly with the live action shoot, or he's not going to comp properly, um, because it's a real piece of footage. Marcel is a real stop motion piece of footage. You can't alter the lighting later when you're compositing, um, and so that required our stop motion DP uh, Eric Atkins being on set every day and taking the most meticulous uh, notes on on the lighting setup so that he could recreate it on the stages, down to like okay, Marcel's uh, standing four inches from a Coca-Cola can and that might bounce light. So right, like right. things like that, every scenario, every time I looked down at his iPad on set, it just looked like scratchings from like a beautiful mind. It's just like equations and math and like measurements. <laughs> and, um, but, but he did it and he has a, a real um, engineering brain for that sort of thing. Uh, and it's incredible and when Marcel's interacting with things, um, shadows, like for example, when he's in the car uh, there's, you know, we're passing by trees and there's shadows flickering across. Um, and so for each one of those shadows, Eric had to take a look at the time code. Okay, we're passing a tree at this time code. And then 
and then automate oh uh, a flag to pass by the light to um, sync oh up perfectly with when we pass by the tree. Uh, so all of that is super meticulous, incredible work wow. um, by our cinematographers and the animation team. I mean, I'm, I'm and, oh, sorry, and the, v the VFX team also crucial. No, no, I just am in awe of that because I know what everything you're saying. I understand exactly what you went through and it's insane. It's beautiful. It's a beautifully shot film. It, the animation, it was so good that I was like, Did, is this a CG character that they made look like stop motion? Because that would make the most sense, easiest play to do something like yeah. that. But then I would see like, I'm like, man, they got that stop motion, like the tear, man, they got that stuff going. <laughs> They're really doing a good job with that. Like, I'm yeah, like I'm, yeah. if that if that is CG, I'm like, man. So I was like, it was so, this movie fascinates me. It's so multiple levels, my friend, multiple, multiple levels. So then I have to ask you, why is everyone so touched by a shell with a googly eye and a small pair of shoes? Like, what <laughs> is it about this character that everyone, I mean, I teared up in this damn movie, man. I'm like, why am I tearing up over a damn shell? So funny. People keep coming up to me being like, I saw your movie. I bawled. And I have to be like, great. <laughs> I'm glad I made you. Up. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that what is uh, true about why he resonates with so many people is that, um, we all know what it's like to sort of live in a world that wasn't made for us, mm -hmm. you know, either from childhood um, where you're, you know, literally you are. Um, and then I think a lot of us, most of us grow up and we realize like, oh, dang it, I'm still living in a world that wasn't made for me, but just for different reasons than my height. And, uh, and you know, Marcel, Marcel, obviously that's his reality, but he doesn't, he doesn't get hung up. I find him very actually like inspirational to me. Um, and when you talk yeah. about like, how do you sustain yourself over seven years? It's like, I feel sustained and inspired by that character. He doesn't, um, he get you know, he has these huge outsized obstacles thrown at him. He doesn't see the impossibility of that. He just sees it as like another thing to overcome. He will overcome it. It's not personal, just like yesterday and just like tomorrow. And he's, um, he actually enjoys the challenge. Well, I mean, my, my daughters haven't seen it yet because it hasn't come out yet as of, of this. How recording. old are they? Uh, they're 10. So. Uh, oh, great. So, You're but twins? I did get, yes. Uh, I'm like, I'm, I'm actually 25 years old. Look what they've done to me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I actually did at the screening, get the stick on a, a 20. Uh, oh yeah. 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 The, the little peel offs and stick on like to, so they're in uh, Marcel's in my in my my girl's bathroom right now. <laughs> As we speak, it was put like first time. I'm like, here, girls, I got something for you. And they put them up and they're like, I don't know who this is, but they're drawn yeah, to right. them instantly. They haven't even seen. I think I showed them the I did show them the trailer. They're like, oh, I want to watch that. And I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah. And my girls are going to ball. It's going to be fantastic. Um, now, last I'm question. I'm so glad man. to hear that because. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, God. No, no, no. Go ahead. You were saying. I was just going to say, I'm so glad to hear that because I think, you know, like I, I, we made this movie uh, to appeal to our own sensibilities. And it was always sort of a question like we want kids it to be family friendly and, and we want kids to enjoy it. But we weren't sure if it was going to play young because it's, you know, it's not like the spectacle that like the Minions is or whatever. And so um, so but I've been really like really pleased to see that kids as young as like five or six, like really love the movie and um and are laughing at all the same places that we are mostly. I mean, I mean, you do stuff from throw up, you have throw up. So I mean, you're good. You got, you got a couple, <laughs> yeah, totally. you, you got a shell throwing up, sir. I mean, you've, you've got them, sir. You've, you've hit that demographic fairly well. Um, last question, man. And how did A24 get into this? Uh, A24 got involved. Um, I'm so like, they've done such a great job of helping to, you know, bring it to audiences and hopefully get, um, uh, you know, make sure it's seen by the people that uh, would want to see a movie like this. Um, they got involved because we screened at the Telluride. We premiered at the Telluride Film Festival uh, last August or September. And um, they uh, they bought it uh, after, uh, shortly after that. Um, and Amazing. it was such a beautiful um, coincidence uh, that they were I think that they're they're trying to, I don't know if they, I don't know, I think they're trying to, you know, branch out and do movies that aren't just like um, the typical A24 movie, whatever that is. Right. There is no, there's no typical A24 movie. You no, know, it's so. really weird. It's like, people are like, oh, it's like folk horror or dark shit. And it's, I'm like, I mean, Moonlight, uh, Lady Bird, Minari, like none of those are 
everything everything everywhere all at once i mean <laughs> yeah yeah totally hot dog fingers sir there's hot dog fingers in that movie. <laughs> um <laughs> so uh and last question what's next for uh, marcel when's when's the sequel <laughs> man i don't know <laughs> i don't know whenever ryan reynolds frees up um, <laughs> Um, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, hopefully the movie comes out, finds an audience and there's a there's a market for a sequel. But um, I, I know for sure that like I got so excited when we started developing his community, which was one of the last things that we sort of did because they're not in the movie for very long. And now, like, I yeah. love those characters, but they're only in oh, for yeah. five seconds. Uh, and some of them have really great, you know, voice talent attached to them. So I'd love to do something that, you know, features a few more of those oh. characters. Listen, we'll see. Uh, Dean, man, uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm I'm so happy that this movie exists in the world and in this universe. Uh, I appreciate. We need it more than ever. I think now we need we need a film like this. We need a, uh, We need Marcel. We need Marcel. We need some happiness. We need to connect to those kind of characters again. So, brother, man, I uh, I appreciate you making the movie and uh, nothing but continued success, man. I can't wait to see hey. what you come up with next, brother. Thank you. This has been so fun talking to you. Um, thank you. Thank you for having me. This has been great. Also, where can I get a hustle hat? <laughs> uh, at my store at. <laughs> this is a good plug. <laughs> I appreciate you, brother. Thanks, man. 